In the past, uh, competition authorities, both uh, in Europe but also in the US, have looked at uh, product overlaps, which concerned products which were actively marketed already, but also products which were uh, in late stage development. Um, this is a common concept and has been applied for many years, and particularly uh, in the pharmaceutical space. Um, but more recently, in, uh, in the Dow DuPont case a year ago in Europe, the Commission has taken a novel approach whereby it did not look at concrete product overlaps, albeit maybe at pipeline development stage, but actually took the view that two big companies with two big R&D budgets and two big R&D departments in itself would create a problem. The theory is if two big R&D departments are merged and post-merger, chances are that the budget of the merged R&D department would be reduced, the output, innovation, would be reduced. So that's the novel theory. And based on that, the European Commission has forced DuPont to divest its entire R&D department, including 300 scientists. So at the moment, uh, the European Commission has applied this theory in two cases, uh, the Dow DuPont and the Bayer Monsanto case, both in the agrochemical space. Um, I believe it will also be applied in the pharmaceutical space, but it could, in fact, be applied to just any uh, industry. When advising clients in the past, it was relatively straightforward. One looked at products actively marketed on, on, on the market, uh, but also pipeline products, so concrete products in the pharmaceutical space, phase three late stage development products, so concrete products. Uh, now we are faced with a situation where the Commission acknowledges we are not talking about concrete products, we're talking about innovation as such. So I believe um, in concentrated markets with only four or five players globally, uh, one has to make an assessment upfront much more rigorously to check whether innovation post-merger will be diminished.